It's back and bigger than ever. It's the unofficial 40 from Soonerscoop.com. Presented by the Choctaw Casino and Resort in Durant. Now, here's the entire Sooner Scoop crew. Carrie, Josh, Eddie, and Bob. All right, welcome back. It is another edition of the Choctaw Casino and Resort in Durant. Unofficial 40 podcast. Uh, you can find us on iTunes, Google Play Store, uh, Stitcher, wherever you get your podcast, uh, you can find us, the Oklahoma Sooners Unofficial 40. Also, this is really cool. Uh, we haven't mentioned this yet, but but Apple came out with a new feature on Siri. If you just hit Siri and say, play Oklahoma Sooners Unofficial 40 podcast, uh, or you can say, play the latest uh, Oklahoma Sooners Unofficial 40 podcast, uh, your iPhone will just automatically start playing it for you. So that's pretty cool. That's badass. It uh, works. I want to remind you we're uh, brought to you. We're made possible each and every week, and this is a weekly podcast thanks to Choctaw Casino and, and Resort in Durant. Uh, please go out and support the, the wonderful fo- wonderful folks out there at the Choctaw Casinos. Go check them out online, ChoctawCasinos.com. Uh, of course, they've got the table games. Uh, they got roulette and craps going now. Uh, a lot of great concerts. Go check out their uh, their upcoming uh, ones uh, online at ChoctawCasinos.com. I was actually just uh, going to check that out. But great hotel, uh, great restaurants. So uh, go check them out. Uh, couldn't do the podcast each and every week like we do uh, without them, or we wouldn't do it each and every week without them. I'll just put it that way. Uh, Choctaw Casino, Andrew, and also the district uh, with the bowling alley and uh, the sports bar and the multiplex uh, movie theater. So... Uh, just a great place, and, and eat, lots of great places to eat. So anyway, guys, uh, we're here. We all made it to the same place, even though the weather forecasters uh, <laughs> told us that there was no way we were going to be able to get around anywhere. That's surprising. Eddie Radosevich, uh, the leader of the uh, Big Dairy, Big Bread Resistance. Big Bread, Big Dairy, but no one's really paying attention. <laughs> uh, Bread's first. Actually, Bob and I had decided See, yeah, last night uh, that it's, there's also Big Frozen Pizza. There can be because I think there that's what be. dudes usually get. Like yes, well that's the thing. Like nobody ever pizza. goes and gets bread. What are you going to do with bread besides make a they sandwich? They do get bread. I mean the bread's always gone at Walmart. I know, and that's that's what I'm thinking is is who well, buys can, it. You can toast it. You know, you can use it on sandwiches. You can butter true. it up. That's true. You got three or three or four kids. It helps. That's true. Peanut butter and jelly. Yep. Yeah, you've always got I that ate around. Plenty of peanut butters and jelly when I was growing up. But it the the fact of the matter is is for the fourth time this winter we've been told that it was going to snow and we got nothing. Who would you say is most in cahoots? Mike Morgan. He's, he's, there's no doubt about he's, it. He's taking more money uh, under the table than anyone in your estimation. either that or he just has no idea how to forecast winter weather. <laughs> and th- th- both options are on the table. Eddie, was there a secret menu at uh, Brahms today? No, but I, did you see I went up there and. <laughs> Asked him uh, if I could order off of the Big Bread, Big Dairy menu. That's what I, I, I was asking. In the, I was is in there, the drive-thru. Is there a secret menu? She acted like she didn't know what, she, what I was talking about, but we know. <laughs> she knows that I know that she knows, basically, is how it all, uh, bo- what it boils down to. Well, we'll know for sure if they start carrying frozen pizza at Brahms. I think they do. They, yeah. They I'm, do? Oh, no, I'm pretty sure that they do. I don't do. think it's anything I'd touch, but I'm pretty sure they do. I would actually trust a Brahms... Frozen uh, pizza. Maybe not. No, 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 no. I mean, I guess the dairy the dairy can't be that bad, but they probably process it somewhere else. You see, uh, they don't make tomato sauce at Brahms, do they? I, that's what I'm wondering. Portnoy did a, uh, a frozen pizza one by, test. Yeah. yeah, bunch of places I'd never even heard of. I think they all the have Giorno was the, the only one I'd heard of. I'd heard well, of Sto- Stouffer's, but French that's French bread pretty pizza. original. That was pretty funny because he I said, talked to some East Coast sources that said that. Uh, the one that I'd never heard of that was definitely East Coast. I think it was the last one. Mm-hmm. Supposedly this is pretty good. Hmm. He did Chuck E. Cheese, I by know. the way. And I feel very, very vindicated. Why do you feel vindicated? I was the Chuck one that Cheese said Chuck E. Cheese, pizza. I want to try it. I was the one and that I brought said that it, it was up. good. Okay. I said it was good. They everyone good else song. told me it was crap. I think he gave it a 6.0. Yeah, I know. It was like a, it was a very Which is uh, a pretty good score it for work, him. It was a workman's pizza. So now, damn it, I want to get Chuck E. Cheese all of a sudden. The other thing that has come up... You, you just can't go in and get that by yourself. Like You have to either get it delivered, <laughs> no, no. or you have to kidnap a kid to go in there yes, and get it you with you. You have to have a niece or a nephew. Otherwise, you're one step away from being a pedophile. Yeah, you can't walk oh, into you're a... Just, you're innocently bumping into a child away from being a pedophile. Well, and keep in mind, too, that you got to go... Don't When you go in there, don't you have to get, like go through like an entrance? 
and to tell him, oh, I'm just just a solo. Do yeah, you? Like, I, yeah, I think so. Yeah, you do. You like I'm. I'm I think that's probably oh, because you have to like pay. Is it like you got to pay per hour for being there or something? No, I think it's more of like a, the Gaddy Town. It has like a pizza area before you go into the. Yeah, like, the pizza the, stuff is usually in the back. In the last one that I was at, when I did go in there by myself, I was looking to pick up some ladies. <laughs> I've been to enough niece and nephew parties. You got to get stamped when you go to Chuck E. Cheese. That yep. makes sense. Oh, that's a standard policy in all the kids' places these days. <laughs> is it? Have, have like, you, they uh, have these black light numbers that you'll put on. Yes, that's it. Yep. Look, and then as you roll out, they'll they'll check it. I wonder if that sure black light is something else. Do they, like, kind of check your groin area, too, I think make they sure? Should, you should have, if you're going to go into a Chuck E. Cheese by yourself or a Gaddy Town or whatever pizza play, main event, like, if you go into those places by yourself as a, as a grown adult. Main event doesn't have bad pizza, either. Do they not? Uh-uh. I've never been in one. Um... But you should literally have to hand over your license and get a sexual predator check. Like I, I think I think that's a service that we need to look into for these places. I, I think mm-hmm. that's fair. I, I will say I I've, I've only done Chuck E. Cheese with Laney once, and that was for a little girl in her class's birthday party. And we really we went in and we came out thinking, Nope, we're Dave and Buster's people. So we we go to Dave and Buster's when like, like that's Laney's jam. Wow, not going go to not going back to Chuck E. Cheese, huh? Dave and yeah, Buster's. I game. haven't been there in a while, but the too last time I was too there, white, too white trash. No, here's yep. what it is: they try to be that's fancy with the bar and everything, uh, but their food is terrible. Like they try and have nice that's food, fair. it's just not good. Like, Dave and Buster's good. horrible ribs and you yeah. know bad mashed potatoes and. Like I can't remember the last time be I've been more to than one. you are. Like be oh, be good at chicken strips and pizza. Yeah, like that's okay. There's no no harm in that. Don't try to do baby back ribs that are awful. That doesn't do you any good. It's a disservice. I, I, yeah, I'm with you. Like we go there. Usually Tiffany and I'll have a beer or something. Laney runs around. We keep Layla busy while Laney's playing games. Like that that that's pretty much a hour to kill on any weekend. So. You know who loves to get blackout drunk at uh, at at Dave and Buster's, Steve McNair, uh, Jared Followell. Jared was going to be my <laughs> somehow guy. that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> Can you just say you know who loves to get blackout drunk and then just leave it blank and Jared's <laughs> like a possible answer? Does he like to play the games and stuff? Oh yeah, like ski okay. ball. Like I literally said, I bet you. Like he texted me one night from a Dave and Buster's bragging about like. He will play so much, like he gets the ridiculous gifts. Like at the, he gets like the three D, you know, orb <laughs> clock and stuff. Like so, he probably drops like a thousand dollars to get a crappy, uh, you know, what's the stupid? What was the like a Brookstone clock? Oh yeah, you know. I, mean, I always wanted uh, one of those as like a kid. Just anything from Brookstone, but my parents would so never expensive. like. Yeah, my parents would like. No, we're not going to spend one hundred and fifty dollars on a writing pen that has a, a light on top. <laughs> Our Dave and Buster's has a Roomba, and Tiffany and I really want it. Well, oh. Lainey is excellent at the games. Like she, like if she spins the big wheel, she almost always wins. Like the five hundred tickets for the one spin. Nice. Like, Lainey has a real gift for these games. I don't know what it is. Like I don't know if it's just they're nicer to kids than they are to adults. But we'll do. We'll play the same games, and she'll win. 250 tickets and let Tiffany I'll win like 50 like it, it's crazy but like we'll let her go in and she always as we're leaving she's like okay I want to go pick a toy so we go pick a toy and she'll want something that's like a thousand tickets white like, and that room is not buying itself child you go get the bouncy <laughs> balls or the snakes like n- nothing for you so we're, yeah. we're accumulating to that Roomba oh she's got God. like 9,000 tickets at uh, Dave and Buster. Yeah, it's great. Me, me and Brittany are uh, saving up for an Xbox One. By the time we get it, it'll be like <laughs> Xbox Three will be out. You'll have spent seven thousand dollars <laughs> to get that Xbox One. You won't have any time to to play on it. Do you get tickets for like buying beer? That should Strictly that should happen. Play. No, but you can use your tickets. I think toward getting that. You can use it on food if that's oh, how you, tell me that. you choose to do it. Hmm. I can buy beer with Laney's tickets. I mean, this is just perfect. It's, it's like full circle life. Dad, I thought we had like 5,000 tickets. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Daddy sweetie. Daddy went on a bender, sweet girl. <laughs> well, they had my favorite whiskey. I'm that, sorry, Laney. See that these <laughs> kids start calling me back or oh, he starts winning national titles. One of the two. 
there there was there was something else on the docket today. Um, you guys have been bugging me about T-shirts a lot lately. Uh, the Rivals 250 came out. Uh, not exactly positive for a lot of OU prospects. I mean, it's positive in that there's a lot of kids on there, there's but it's terrible. probably not as high as people would well, have Let's just preferred. say Bob and Josh do not agree with some of the rankings. I don't know if all. any of us do. Well, I'm just saying, for the our recruiting right. guys, the guys in general, that keep up with it. they don't really care for the rankings, I'm assuming. Yeah. It, it's... The every year there are a couple of guys that I just I, I don't end up seeing eye to eye with rivals on. Right now, Andrew Rame is yes. that dude. Andrew Rame, in my eyes, is probably a top fifty guy in the country. Yep. And he's currently slowly sliding his way down the rivals two fifty. And I don't know and I mean and people will say, Oh, it's you know, rivals, blah blah. Josh Himholt, who is our Oklahoma guy, came to Oklahoma and literally saw Broken Arrow play last year. So this is not a, you know, he's got, the guy's from Michigan. This is not a, he's got something out against Oklahoma guys, or he's he's the guy that gave Dax Hill five stars last year. So this is not they didn't that know thing. You. I just happen to disagree with how he sees Andrew Rame. And I, I, I put it on the board in some of our notes, and, you know, I've told you guys the same thing. I have talked to someone I really, really trust on O-line play. That you know, it's, it's my favorite position to watch. I love to talk about it. But this is someone who's forgotten more O-line play than I'll ever know and thinks Andrew Rames one of the best high school offensive linemen he's ever seen. The only reason I could see it is because he's not a tackle, because he didn't grow, he's now a guard. So he maybe he's outside of the 100 if you don't believe guards can get up that high. But when I've watched him play the last two seasons, he's been incredible. I don't know what more he can do than what he's already done. Commit to Texas. And then it'll it'll jump in the top 50. Yeah, sure. And we're oh, are we plugging the t-shirts now or See, and that was the thing. Like we mm-hmm. know what our first t-shirt just is going to be. Just give us some feedback. Would you buy this? Would you buy a shirt from us? And the first t-shirt that we will make will be a Sooner Scoop t-shirt that says Rivals Hates OU. I can see it. I'm just envisioning big block letters on the front, nothing else. Like, could, Maybe the would scoop rivals logo on the sue shoulder. us if we use their logo? That's what I was just thinking. Could we use the actual <laughs> Rivals logo? Which actually would be I would be right out of the barstool playbook. I think we want to get sued by Rivals. Well, you just sell them until they send you a cease and desist, and then stop selling them. That's would usually how like it works, if yeah. Portnoy sued, pardon my take, like we're one of them, and then they're like, you bastards. Oh, yeah, I didn't even think about that that way. Well, I mean, I we are our own work. company. We're yeah. not owned by rivals. Sure, I, that's fair. We just sold 20 of them. I feel like people have already started looking. Like, yeah, people are like, where do I buy And this? there's 40. I mean, Sooner Scoop is a free agent. I'm sure it That'd voids, be my dream to it walk in. It probably voids our contract. <laughs> I'd have to I'm have a the lawyer look at, look at it. it. Yeah. By the way, for anybody trying to beat us to the punch on this, we've already, this is trademarked. So just just go on. People are going to sub, and they get the $99 in gear, and they're going to get the T-shirt. I'm not worried about the people stealing this idea. Um, I'm worried about Facebook stealing this idea. Because I, mean, can you I am I now know. convinced, and I, I, I'll give Gay Biker credit for this, because he talked about it on his radio show yesterday. Uh, but I've been convinced for a long time that if I talk about something out loud... I get ads on Facebook about it the next day. Like, they oh, are yeah. listening. Oh, no, there's no doubt about that. Like, that... we need to, like, convene congressional hearings over this. Like, I'm going to start doing Jerry, a that's test. The... I've been trying to tell you guys for the <laughs> longest time that all this shit was happening. You have never gone on this rant before. Not on that one particular, but, oh, we're being watched. There's no doubt about it. That's why I put I put tape over the uh, camera? computer and my uh-huh. camera. Yeah. Unplug everything in my house. Do you get those emails that say, uh, I have your password and I have, you know, I have seen the websites that you go on? Oh, yes. yeah. I have taken yes. a video of you jerking off and I will reveal it to the world. Not like that, but I do get like the weird, you know, like, I was going to say infomercial, but like accusatory, I guess. I don't know. It, and I get phone calls all the time, too. But it's a blackmail email is what it is. Yeah. I get those yeah. regularly. Does that mean I watch more porn than Eddie? Or I think I don't it just means that, that you've been probably hard. You've to do. signed up with a lot of companies <laughs> that have ended up getting hacked. Yeah, that and it's probably one of those situations that, like you, 
when you unsubscribe from something, I've seen stuff that says like when you unsubscribe, you automatically go on a list that will like oh, send, like resend you, you stuff back out. They sell you to a list. Yeah, basically. In spite, like, yo, you're gonna unsubscribe from us. We're gonna sell you to to the dark oh, that's web. That's super shade. Basically, the only place you need to send your credit card information is rivals.com and soonerscoop.com. <laughs> uh, and when we get the rivals hates OU t-shirts, and I'm gonna personally go to every high school to make sure every player is real over the next twenty years. <laughs> You'll be you'll be you'll be proud of me. I I had a Photoshop picture ready to go with me and Nev from Catfish. Uh-huh. And I was gonna say, oh, Don't geez. worry, I ha I've got this guys. <laughs> I was gonna send it out and I didn't. So I think everybody should mostly oh, applaud should me for my efforts to you for not, for not for being not, throwing for not, everybody under the bus. For not uh damaging our relationship with rivals. Correct. Correct. That's a, that was a bad deal. It was a bad. It was a bad week. I, I don't think anybody has not said that it's just a bad look for everybody. And I mean, there's really nothing. It's bullshit. There's nothing really we can really do about it. Well, it's, it, it's not our fault, but but we do stand behind our national analysts. Sure, it, we know they do good work. Somebody had a royal screw up. Yeah, and it is not the policy of rivals to have placeholder rankings. It, it isn't. And the policy is that you either evaluate someone in person or see their film before you give them a ranking. And obviously that wasn't done for a kid that didn't even exist. Yep. I, and, you know, as a guy like these national guys, I spend a lot of time around these guys. I know them well, like all these guys, whether it's Chad Simmons or Woody Womack or Rob, you know, a lot of these guys I've known for decades now. Um it, the thing is that people get so upset about the placeholder thing, and I, I agree, it's not our policy, it's not something we do. Is it really that mind-boggling that if you said, okay, Alabama legitimately offered this kid, he's a three-star, like at least, like at least. Just be realistic with yourselves about that. Now, is it what we do? Of course it's not. It can't be what you do. I understand that, I get all that, but like the fans that are all outraged about it, like, put put yourself in put our, our shoes. Say you've got a kid and Oklahoma signs him, and he's got offers from Alabama, Georgia, and Clemson. You're automatically going to assume he is a better player than the guy who has offers from Pittsburgh and South Carolina and Mississippi State. Those are all good programs, but they're not like those other three. And because of that, you're going to assume it's a better player. That's... That's just reality. Those schools can recruit better players. So, like I said, you can't do it, and I understand that. But people acting like it's just this, oh, how could you? Like, it's it's ridiculous. It was a bad mistake. Rivals did something stupid. I, you know, privately, Carrie and I have both had our conversations with people. Like, we're not happy about it. Like, that's not, I don't want anybody to think, like, this is uh, Josh covering up. No, it's bad. It's a bad look. We look bad. We look just stupid on it. But at the same time, does this like this is a one time thing in nearly 20 years of existence? Like, I, I think we're all going to survive this. People trying to make this, oh, well, now rivals' whole credibility is thrown out the window. Oh, okay. Calm down. Like, just breathe a little bit. The only bit. people that are saying that are people that have never had credibility. Yeah. No, uh, it's the carnival barkers. Yeah. On the radio. And that, it's the, you know, it's the, you know, they hate us because they ain't us. So, whatever. Did you say anus? Anus, that's right. <laughs> the anus is on you for sure. The anus is on them. Uh, okay, so big junior day coming up, and I, I told you and Bob that basically I want to throw this over and let it be your podcast, and Bob's going to have to go in here in a little bit because he's got schedule conflicts. Uh, but I want to remind you guys, uh, also Coop Ale Works, a great sponsor of the program, uh, making it happen for us. Go to coopaleworks.com, uh, their local brewery for nine years. Uh, they might be going on 10. We need to find out when their birthday is. Uh, but just a great selection of local beers uh, done right. Uh, they got the Horny Toad Blonde, the Native Amber, DNR, uh, F5 IPA is a big favorite of a lot of people. Uh, go to coopaleworks.com. You can see where you can go, uh, what what restaurants, what uh, uh, bars. You can get that even outside of Oklahoma, down in Texas, uh, uh, Arkansas, Louisiana. And you can find out where you can go to pick those up uh, at your local liquor store. And now you can get them cold, which is cool in Oklahoma. So, 
Uh, you get the 12 packs of the F5 and the, and the Horny Toad, and they've got their seasonal stuff going on. The Grand Sport Porter uh, is a fantastic beer as well. So thanks to uh, CoopAleWorks.com for supporting the podcast all season long, and uh, appreciate them and uh, appreciate you guys uh, tweeting out your photos, uh, drinking your coop uh, on game days, NBA, what have you. So uh, Junior Day is coming up. And uh, I know, you, Bob, you and Josh have kind of been tracking down names, but I'll just, I mean, I'll literally throw the show to you guys uh, to talk a little bit about uh, what's going on there. Hey, Josh, can we call an, aud- an audible here and have you talk about the Rivals Camp first? Yeah. I oh, mean, you're we're controlling the show just, now. We're wrestling control away from Kerry. Because <laughs> I'm a... That's I, fine. I'm, I, a, I gave I'm you gonna, control. I'm going to leave in like two minutes. So, <laughs> Baby's here. <laughs> Baby's here. We got to go. Oh, get to the hospital, Bob. Um, no, yeah, with, with the five star, I really I went out there hoping it was going to be good, and I thought it was even better than I could have hoped. I mean, we saw three five stars um, that OU is heavily involved with each of them. All three of them either have a visit set up. Kendall Milton will be in Norman tomorrow on Thursday. Uh, Justin Flo and Keely Ringo both told me. They will be in Norman. They just don't know when. I mean, he, Milton's a big-time guy from Fresno. He's a running back. You can sort of understand him being very interested in Oklahoma. Flo and Ringo, if Oklahoma can find a way to get either one of those guys, that's a huge coup to kind of give you some credibility recruiting on the defensive side of the ball. That It's not just a bunch of good guys on defense and elite guys on offense then you're starting to land those elite players on defense. Because Justin Flo, that is a guy that resets your entire culture on defense. I mean, he doesn't know any way other than just on the ragged edge of legal. Like, he is, if he can pop a guy, he's going to pop him. If he can push a guy, there, he was just fun to watch because even in a camp setting where everybody kind of has this impression of, oh, everything's soft and everybody just kind of, you know, everybody's playing against air. There is no playing against air in Justin Flo. He wants to push you. He wants to get hands on you. There was one route where he gets beaten on a running back linebacker route, and it's just a vertical kind of wheel route. And instead of getting beat, he just knocks the kid over, just knocked him over with his hands. He was like, I, and, and am I saying that's good football? No, not necessarily. But I'm saying he's that kind of competitor. Like, he'd rather take the penalty than give up the yardage on a big play. Like he'll live with what happened to go that way. So like I said, I think with those guys, you're off to a really good start. Then you've got Jacoby Covington, um, Ringo's high school teammate. He'll be in this weekend. Uh, Damian Sellers, same story. So there are a lot of good things building for Oklahoma on the West Coast. And you kind of wondered how that would go after Tim Kish, but it sounds like Lincoln Riley and Alex Grinch and Roy Manning are just not missing a beat on the West Coast right now. So you're you're saying that he not only would reset the side of the defensive side of the football, but he's also a zipper resetter as far as the front of your pants after watching him play football. <laughs> wow. Um, wow. You know, yeah. I oh, I don't know where to go with that. Now, I will say. Did you, you know, go just, six to midnight, Josh? This my, it oh, sounds like I mean, he did a little bit, and I'm not gonna lie. When I was well, editing saw, the video, I mean, he's a bad mofo. You talking about Flo? Yes. Yeah. I mean, we saw him at the five star yes. in Atlanta last year. He's a and he, he's a man child. He, he was Zach Evans. He he hurt Zach Evans doing all that stuff you're talking about. Which at the time I just said, boy, that kid's a dick. Like because he just it's he's awesome. Kind of a dick. It's awesome. I can tell you, speaking of rankings, we can tie it all together. I was talking to some of our guys that were out in Los Angeles with me, and during the rankings meetings, there was a conversation basically that was, we all love him, but he is literally a walking, um, uh, he, he's a walking, like, targeting penalty waiting yeah. to happen. Yeah, Like, that. I mean, you know, people, like, think I'm, exa- this dude is a hundred miles an hour all day, every day, and I think you kind of have to be a badass if your nickname is Baby Man. Yeah. Like, because I, I hear that, and I'm like, that sounds like a pansy. But that dude ain't no pansy at all. Like, I, I there were players before he even got there. I'm sitting over kind of waiting to do some interviews, and I see this group of young players kind of hanging out, and they're talking. I can't figure who they're talking about for a little while. And they're like, I'm not kidding you, man. This guy comes in, walks through our sideline in the pregame warm-ups, and it's kind of like, I just wish somebody would say something. 
Like, he's walking on the opposing <laughs> team's sidelines during warm-ups. He is just wired a different kind of way and really just sets a tone. So, like I, like I said, I think he is a guy that could almost instantly change the way your defense thinks of itself. Kind of the, a culture changer. Yeah, uh, he, he really kind of is. I mean, he's that kind of dude. Uh, Ringo, on the other hand, is just an absolute freak of nature. I mean, he is... As good as he was in Atlanta, he's better now. He he's six two, two hundred pounds. Is a guy that someday will go to the NFL Combine and probably run in the high four threes at that size. I mean he he's the closest thing I've seen to Patrick Peters. Yeah, just I mean, your, I, your pictures. Think, your pictures alone, he looked bigger than he did uh, when we saw him last year in Atlanta. And you can see it in those pictures. He hasn't even hit the weight room hard yet. Like he's just like big. He's not chiseled and carved out of I mean he's just a guy that's really gifted right now when he starts to figure it all out he's he's dangerous just to just to give the folks at home an idea on how big this kid is full disclosure I thought he was an outside linebacker I did too (laughs) even last year as 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 up until 72 hours ago I thought he was an outside linebacker oh really yeah well that was the thing that shocked me and part of me is that me not paying attention the other part is (laughs) That is, he is an unreal specimen of a man. No, when I saw him, even last year in Atlanta, I mean, this is after his sophomore season. We're watching him at the five-star in Atlanta, and I'm sitting there thinking, man, that's a good-looking linebacker. And then he lines up with the DBs, and I was like, huh? He's as big in high school as Kenneth Murray was. I mean, if that kind of puts it in perspective. Because, I mean, you know, people can say whatever they want about Kenneth Murray. Kenneth Murray's an all-off-the-bus guy now for Oklahoma. Like, that's a oh, dude yeah. that just looks like a monster. No doubt about it. So, I mean, just like I said, Ringo could it's absolutely be paying a 215-pound corner that can turn and run with any receiver in the country. That that entire group that you saw out there last week, as far as, uh, you know, just as far as the guys that participated in the Rivals camp out there, Will that be hard pressed to beat as far as a more talented group? I mean, when they go down to, I don't know about Atlanta or Miami or wherever they have those southeast stops. Houston, well, I'm sure, will be packed on Sunday. Yeah. Uh, is that the West Coast one? Is that the Los Angeles stop? Is that the best one that, from a collection standpoint, I guess that that they'll probably see in one in one day in one group. I think when you look at the elite guys, I mean, you had Flo, who's the number three guy, Ringo, who's number nine, uh, Milton, who's number 14, um, and the Darnell Washington kid, who's now, I think, top 20. I know he's a five-star, but I don't know exactly where he fell on New 100. Um, you you look at the – I mean, that's that's four or five stars at one regional camp. That's, that's pretty rare. Um, even at, you know, the Dallas, Atlanta, Miami – you know, the, the places where there are just absolutely tons of talent in the surrounding area, that's pretty special to get those guys. I mean, because you talk about it, Ringo came in from Phoenix. Milton came all the way down from Fresno. Um, you know, th- there's a lot of guys that had to make that trip even to get to a place like Los Angeles that has so much talent embedded. To, to put it in perspective how good it was, I literally watched the offensive line for about five reps. Yeah, because the skill position and linebacker talent, or and, and running back linebacker groups, were just so good you couldn't you couldn't really spend a lot of time on O line D line. So there was actually a guy there um, that I, I I think maybe in time Oklahoma could take some interest in in the twenty twenty class um, kid from Sacramento, but until that you know like it was still just such a secondary thing because you knew this is going to be the best look I'm going to get at some of these guys. And it was unbelievable. And we haven't even brought up Darian Green Warren, you know, a Rivals 250 kid that's been committed to OU for months. And we haven't even gotten to that conversation because it was so good all around him. Well, how was, how was he? Yeah. Uh, We've already, we've already run the uh, interview that you had with him on the site, but uh, just as far as you were able to catch up with him afterwards, uh, you know, I, I think that there was a lot of people that, and I guess, I don't know even know if rightfully so is the right way to put it, but uh, freaked out when he started taking unofficial visits. Uh, he kind of cleared the air on that as far as uh, what his commitment status is with Oklahoma. Yeah, you know, and, and he and I had talked about it. And actually, the night that he first took that first trip to Florida, which was right after the Future 50, right around New Year's, and you could tell it really shocked. And 
I guess I should specify. I said it in the in the interview, but I've always said Darian. It's apparently Darion. So like we, we need to we we got, we got to get the right emphasis on the right syllables there. But um, he is a guy that kind of took it to heart. Like he kind of was bothered by the fact that so many OU fans were kind of like, "What are you doing here? What? Why? Why would you go visit? You're committed to Oklahoma. Yada yada." People don't do that on Twitter. Like, just don't. You know, it's really, especially if you think you're trying to have a positive impact on OU recruiting, if you don't have something good to say, just don't say it. Just don't say it. I know that's an old grandma policy. Like I do, just subtweet. I've just never under... Well, that's one of the all, and we can talk about here in a little bit, but that, I love that story so much <laughs> about lying to go into the, to the military and then taking a, a 180 like 48 hours later. But I've never understood the, the guy that, A, tweets negative things to a recruit. Well, tweets recruits in general. Tweets negative recruits. And then, or tweets negative things to recruits. And I don't under, I've never understood how people think that that is helpful. Or on the other side of it, it's just downright creepy. There's, it is. There's, like, I, it's it, it's a pretty good sign of mentally unbalanced. Not that well, I'm not it, mentally unbalanced. I think we all are it a little bit, but the people that will just sit there and you scroll through their Insta or their Twitter and they've sent like pictures of OU stuff to kids. It's just I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm in the minority. It's creepy to me. Well, I mean, it's like I got into it with the Boomer One Four Five guy. And I got like those, a horrible DM, like it was like psychotic. I mean, it's just there's it's a different breed of person, and yeah. we all know that. Well, we've all had our fair share of run-ins. Yeah, I'll leave it at that. And the you know the neck tattoo guy quits Twitter every oh, five God. weeks. You know, just the mention is going to blow up our Twitter again. Uh, well, we need some good marketing. Okay. All right. Well. I've, All advertising. And you know what? I, I have never. Well, spring games coming around. It's it, that's usually I've, my time to shine. What I found about take those in, <laughs> take into the next level of uh, OU fans. What I found about those fights is it helps us every time we gain subscribers. It's crazy. I mean, it's, I should start a fight with those people every day. People Just, know that I'm generally the go along, you know, get along to go along kind of guy in this group. But Harry's not wrong, guys. I can see the numbers. Like we. All these movements to cancel scoop and blah blah. What it is? We, it's we, it's we that we pick up subscribers every time. It is that that carnival barking mentality, which the loudest person gets heard. But what you don't realize is not everybody is is like the crazy people on Twitter. Most people lean towards normal. Like it's just like on our boards. A lot of we have a shit ton more subscribers than post on the message board every day. And it can be dominated by a certain group of people. It usually is, and that's the way message boards work. But that doesn't mean that thousands of people aren't reading what you're saying. Perfect example yeah. right now in, uh, in in modern society is the crazy bitch gun girl that has like 160,000 <laughs> followers that pooped herself. Yeah. I guarantee you like 120,000 of the 160,000 followers she has follow her strictly because they hate her. It's a it's a hate follow. And you got to see what I this crazy watch bitch has basketball next. right now. Yeah, that's that's more of a personal problem. We've been meaning to talk to you about that. <laughs> I just can't stop myself. Like every time I know women's basketball is on, I watch it and just I hate it. It is I hate watch a lot of stuff though. Yeah, that's I do the same. I do the same. I think that's just what people do. I watch the weather every night. So, I mean, the joke's on us. <laughs> but I don't even know what the original point was other than Somehow we got off on a tangent about no. We, kids. we were talking about uh, Green War and kind of taking to heart some of the stuff that was said when he visited Florida and some of that kind of stuff. So let me try to get this back on track somehow. Um, yeah, long story short, us here. Yeah, he, he, he talked about it, and you know, I think he's, you know, he kind of learned that it's just inevitable. Like you're you're going to have to deal with some people that just say crazy, meaningless stuff that you know that should that you can't let it impact how you feel about your situation and. You know, I, I kind of put him on the spot in the last question. I was just like, how, how likely do you see yourself sticking with Oklahoma? And, and he was pretty clear that there's not a lot of wiggle room. Like, it's going to take something pretty monumental for him to feel differently about Oklahoma. Um, you know, and I know there's been some that have asked me, like, oh, Josh, do, you know, does OU, are, are they focused on Manning, or on, excuse me, on Green Warren? Is he a guy they really want? You know, that kind of thing. And 
even even if you wanted to make the case that okay, he's a little smaller than some of the other guys they're offering. Like I I get that. Like I, I can kind of see how people would get led down that road. I really struggle to believe that Oklahoma's going to go and kind of shit on modern day. Yeah. Like that's a kid. Even like if you're like eighty percent sure you want him, you take him. Because you want as many modern, you want a good relationship at that school that you know over the next five years is going to produce another fifty Division One players. I'm Just not- keep that conveyor belt coming with him and Cradell. Yeah, and you know you're you're obviously recruiting some others. So, I mean, there's there's plenty of good. You want to have good feelings with that program. You think those chances of him, and I, I don't think it's probably contingent on this, but. As far as Jeremiah Cradell having a successful freshman season, would that go a long way? And uh, not necessarily ironing things out, because I don't think there's any problems there, but maybe solidifying themselves at Mater Day? I, I do. I, you know, because, I mean, that's the thing. Like, we've always talked about, well, OU hasn't, you know, for years the joke was OU never lands a guy at Sarah. Well, I mean, you look at it and tell Cradell you had Mater Day, Sarah, and Bosco really, you know, three of the huge talent producers in Los Angeles, and Oklahoma really hadn't made any impact at any of those. They've been heavily involved with a lot of guys, but had never gotten over the finish line, and Cradell kind of changed that. So I, I wonder, because Bosco and Modern Day are not only so, they're very close to one another, but they're also very, um, they're so familiar with one another. So I, I, I think there is some ability for even there, a Bosco there's a little bit of there, there's a little bit of jinx union going on there, sure. isn't there? Oh yeah. As far as mirroring each other's success and being two of the better programs, obviously in California, but more of a national scale, I guess, with those two. Yeah, I mean, because even as many, you know, you get the Corona Centennial, and you you go into some of those great programs in Southern California, those two are still just a little bit above everybody else. I mean, and they are arguably the two best programs in the country right now. I mean, you know, you throw in IMG, you throw in, a, uh, you know, a couple others from a, Allen would be in the conversation. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a couple others that you can make the case for, but when it comes to talent production, I don't know that there's anybody other than IMG that keeps up with those two. You know, it's kind of crazy that USC and UCLA have been down for so long, and we think that they've been down for so long, but even just now – with, uh, you know, with the, I guess, the pitfalls that they've gone through, those uh, two premier programs out in Calif- in uh, Los Angeles, that OU's just now starting to break down that wall. And they've been shitty for, I mean, to be honest, eight or nine years, maybe even more. Oh, you can go back. Like I, I guess what I'm saying is it's just taken Oklahoma a long time to finally get true inroads at the national California powers, I guess. I mean, you talk about a perfect time for OU to set up a home and home with USC right <laughs> Right now. Right. If you could get it like for the next two years, man, take it. Because not only do you have all that momentum going for yourself, but you're probably going to beat South uh, Southern California and probably beat their doors off two straight years. Like do that <laughs> and you really can make some impact. But yeah, you're right. And, and especially, like I said, Los Angeles is like Atlanta and Miami and Houston. There's never a lull. There may be a year that's not as good as the next and that kind of thing, but every year there are tens of guys who aren't just going to be roster guys in Oklahoma. They are guys who can be multiple-year starters at OU in the greater Los Angeles area. So if you can go in there and really set up shop and be a place that, okay, maybe maybe we're not going to beat USC consistently, But just about anybody else in Los Angeles, Oklahoma can win those recruiting battles more often than not. Bob has rejoined us. Hello, hello. You're welcome, Bob. I filled all that time for you. (laughs) Are we at junior day yet? Are we still? No, we haven't even got to junior day. All right. Mm -hmm. Are you just going to try and take over the show now again? (laughs) Come in here and bully us around, Bob. Uh, Well, was there anybody else? I mean, Los Angeles. Important question. Oh, (laughs) Oh, well played. Uh, by the way, speaking of six to midnight, uh, Darnell Washington, mm-hmm. uh, you told me that uh, he is the best since O.J. Howard, and that I would be very excited to see him. So I went and watched his huddle, and it was a little, str- you know, it's it, 
he didn't do a whole lot offensively. Most of it was on defense as an outside linebacker, but he wants to play tight end. Anybody to OJ Howard, like forever, but he is going to be. It's he like, could be. I mean, he he has OJ Howard's on the Adrian Peterson like scale of oh my god to me. Yeah, because I mean, when when Leonard Fournette came out and everybody was like, oh, this is this is, and I saw Leonard Fournette a bunch. I mean, he came to the very. I think he was at the very first Rivals Challenge. The same one OJ was. Uh, yep. Yeah, and then he was. You know, that was when he was a sophomore, and then he came back. He was in Chicago with Joe Mixon. And I would watch Leonard Fournette, and I was like, yeah, that's a really big physical running back, but he's not Adrian Peterson. So I get where you're coming from on that. But I'm just saying, this kid, he looks kind of like, you know, he looks a little bit on film uh, like a DGB a little bit, just his physical build. Uh, and he's not really, even though most of his tape is on defense, it's not that physical. He like drag. He likes to drag people down. Like, he's not just putting his head in somebody's chest and blowing them up. Uh, but he, yeah, he's. Re- I know he's got tons of offers, but a Las Vegas kid, kind of. I don't know. I mean, I would love to see what oh you could do with a tight end like that. He is. He's one. He, so he shows up to camp and he's late. I don't even see him go through check in. And somebody goes, he forgot his shoes. So like he had to go back to his hotel, or there was some issue where he didn't have his shoes with him. So he comes back and somebody was like, oh, I don't even know if he'll show up. Like because. Everybody kind of thought like he just came to get his five star invite and be done with it. Well, <laughs> so all of a sudden I kind of turn around and the the rivals camps this year have put in that drill that they do at the combine where the receivers facing away from the quarterback and then he spins, catches the ball, and then he runs down the line, yeah. making multiple catches. Mm-hmm. And you turn around and it's this six foot seven, two hundred and fifty pound monster. And he looks like a damn wide receiver. And you're like, that, who, and it really was, you were like, I don't know who that is, but it almost has to be Darnell Washington. And holy crap. Like, cause you just, you knew he was good, but to watch him do what he was doing. It, I mean, like there are certain guys and we talk about him every year. Keely Ringo is another guy like that where their gifts, like it, all, amongst really good players, they're still just, better like they're just more talented Man than you boys. can ever yeah. be i mean like justin flow is a great player justin flow is a guy who maximizes everything he has and is a very good talent ringo and washington are still they're from a different different genetic line than most of these guys they are the definition of five stars yeah that they i mean like you, I, you I see a guy and you're gonna you're like He's got. He's going to be a first. He has pick. everything yeah. that you need. Yeah, exactly. If those guys stay healthy and stay out of trouble, they're first round draft picks. And they like, work I mean, hard. That, that, that's they, really yeah. the only thing in their way is their own problems. It's kind of what happened to DGB. Couldn't stay mm-hmm. out of his own way. I mean, th- yeah, but you're right. I mean, there are certain unicorns. DGB was a unicorn. Adrian Peterson was a unicorn. Yeah. Oh, I mean, like I said. There, I mean, those are the like. That's what I always tell people when they're like, "Oh, Josh, you're too tough on five stars." Man, a five star is a guy like you. Walk to me. There's only about ten or twelve of them a year, and you walk in a room and you're like, "That dude's different." Like he, there's nobody else here that looks like that guy. And it's just like what you're talking about with Ringo. He walked into that five star, and everybody's like, "Oh, who's that outside linebacker?" And then you're like, "Oh, no, he ran the fastest forty of all the best high school football players in the country." Okay, cool, and he's a sophomore. He ran faster than Hazelwood, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. He ran a legit electric like four five one. Uh, As a sophomore in high school. That's insane. Joe Mixon to me is a little on the cusp until mm-hmm. you see him catching Catch balls. It. Right. Yeah. yeah. Until you mm-hmm. see him running like a wide receiver and catching balls better than wide receivers. But like just off the hoof, you look at him you're like, Yeah, that's a really that's a big kid and a really nice player, but uh, you know, as a runner, I, he didn't really have just that, whoa, like when he ran past yeah. you. Like Adrian Peterson, you were like, holy shit, what did I just see? Yeah, what's this human doing? How's he moving like, like this? Adrian, like you felt like a horse had just galloped. Yes, like, yes. I mean, like it was like, holy crap, I would not want to be in front yeah, of Yeah, that. that's a great, I mean, that's like a great, like if you've never, here's, I don't, Bob, if, if, if you've been down on the track at like Remington. yes. Like when you see horses run by you and you're that close to them, it's crazy. Like, it's one of the most amazing things I've ever experienced in my life. 
And there is a little bit of that, like with Adrian Peterson, a little bit of that feel, which uh, is this racist. We can go ahead and go there, uh, <laughs> where you feel like he is an animal. Like, you know, he, there's, he's not human. There's something, you know, th- coming out of his body that's not normal. And I, I got that with Adrian Peterson. Almost got that with uh, Jermaine Gresham, but not quite. Uh, and kind of Mixon was... I'd put Mixon in that Jermaine Gresham category, which, total stud, you don't see that a lot, but not really at a completely different level. Yeah. Like, but, I mean, Adrian is... It, it, it jades us, Kerry, because he is such... He's the five stars, five star. Yeah. Like, he is the 1% of the 1%. And... It, it messes you up. Like every guy I see, like Kendall Milton's an outstanding player. And if I sit there and look at him through the spectrum of Adrian Peterson, ah, he's, he's good. He's really good. Like, I mean, you can't, you can't even have the conversation because Adrian's just a freak of nature that we'll probably never see again. I mean, like at least in OU's realm of things. You know, I mean, I've, been, I've been asked to give the top three uh, athletic freaks – in the Bob Stoops era, and try and guess what my top three were. I don't know if I told you guys. Ad, before. no, you haven't. Adrian, Adrian was one. Sure. Adrian's obvious. Mm-hmm. Man, Tommy Harris. Tommy Harris was two. Okay, okay. so we're look for one more, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I bet you can't guess. Offense or defense? Would that give it away? Def- I'll go defense. Defense, okay. Not Landry Jones. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, okay. Not a quarterback. So okay, I wanted to be sure. Be sure. Um, Man. Defense. I think Josh. Dan Cody? Was, yes. That's who I was Josh gonna, got uh, it. Wow. I was going to say I was gonna say Austin Ingram. I'm I mean, telling uh, you, Dan Cody, I think he got just a little bit over that line of freak. Like, yeah. Because the only reason I say that is because. He had a little help, didn't he? Uh, probably. It's always rumored. Yeah. Um, but when you would watch them do conditioning after practices, he would blow everyone's doors off. And he would run with, like, with the running backs. It was crazy to watch. He I mean, he, he basically, his body just shut down on him, right? That's why yeah. he never had success at the next level. I mean, his, he had a terrible knee injury, yeah, yeah, and then he just never recovered. Just never never had it again, huh? So, I, I wonder, I'm going to look it up. Let's see if I can find his combine numbers. Dan Cody was probably... Six five two fifty five, and yeah. I bet he ran four seven. Yeah, I, I mean maybe right. better, honestly. And what's weird is just by the combine numbers, like you could say Lane Johnson's one of the biggest freaks ever. Mm, you could, but You're he right. just he just he he didn't become that freak until later in his career when he got big. I mean that he ca- yeah. he just carried his weight so well. Dan Cody at the combine was six foot five and a half, two fifty four. And I guess I don't think at combine. It looks like at the combine he didn't run the forty, but his pro day was four six five. Wow, <laughs> I mean, that's that's freaky. But I Lane Johnson, you could make a real argument. I mean, just for pure physical gifts. Okay, uh, anything to wrap up uh, out, of, out of Los Angeles? We haven't talked about. Uh, it'd be a perfect segue to you were able to talk with Kendall Milton. We haven't run that yet, but he's coming in this weekend. So if you want to wrap up Los Angeles and then we can get into junior day. Uh, Yeah, I I was kind of thinking we'll run Kendall Milton in the morning. Kind of perfect for him being on campus. Yeah, because he's coming tomorrow, right? On Thursday? Yeah, yeah, he'll be on Thursday. I think he's hitting Oklahoma on Thursday. And then is it Texas Friday or Saturday, Bob? I can't Uh, remember. Saturday for Texas. Okay, okay. So, um, so, I mean, he's just kind of making the rounds. And it's interesting how many guys I talk to out there we're kind of doing the same thing, you know, like, oh, we're going to hit Oklahoma, Texas, and then Clemson and Georgia, or, you know, reverse order or whatever. That that seems to be... It's amazing how, how much that's... those guys can get around these days. It's it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, all those seven-on teams, just getting them out there and around. I don't, I don't know how they do that. And those are um, ones being grouped now. OU, Texas, Clemson, Georgia. It's being yep. grouped like that. Well, because, I mean, for those guys, they're like, we're just going south. Like, they don't know, like... <laughs> They're like, so I, like, I, I think I even asked a couple of them, so just heading south. They're like, yeah, yeah. Like they, they, to them, that's just all one area. Like, it's just the same thing. So, um, but no, Milton seemed really excited about it. Talked a lot about his relationship with Jay Bulware. Um, I went on record as kind of saying Bulware sees him as their their number one target at running back, which is, 
you know, p- coaches say things in recruiting. I don't know how much you want to take that to heart, but Kendall wouldn't say it if he hadn't heard it. So it's at least interesting to have that conversation because I think for most people there is a real debate for OU as I think Zach Evans is probably, uh, not even probably, is almost undoubtedly the best running back talent in the country this year. But Milton's so good and really fits Oklahoma nicely. I mean, his ability as a receiver, um, he he is a very good fit for OU. And frankly, I don't love OU's chances with Evans. So, like, I could totally see them saying, yeah, we're going. Mil- Milton's our guy. That's who we really want to sell out for. Because you could sell out for Evans, kind of half-heart Milton, and then lose out on both as to where I think you've got a real chance at Milton. Josh, when it comes to the Milton... Does it help maybe that he doesn't know Jace that well? You think there's anything with Jace and Zach? You've always heard that there's some rivalry there. Um, I, I think it only gets exacerbated because it's Jace had all the early acclaim. He was the big time guy as a sophomore, one state for Alito. Like I mean, there was all these things. Excuse me, as a freshman, one state, and so there was all this buzz about him so early on. He commits early to Oklahoma. Everybody, oh, he's a surefire five-star. He's all these things. But as time has gone on, Evans has kind of become the recruiting darling, and McClellan just continues to produce at a massive level. Not that Evans doesn't as well. Just, you know, that's kind of how it's viewed um, when you have to split the two apart. But I, I, I think there is some rivalry. It's tough for me to envision those two ending up at the same place. I've always wondered if that's why Texas has kind of been at arm's length with McClellan. Like if they're, they, I think they've always sold out to Evans being their guy, and I think that's probably where Evans ends up. Uh, LSU is also a really good possibility. A and M, I think, is slipping maybe for him just a little bit. Um, so you know, we'll see. But I, I think, um, I, I think it does help that Milton is a guy that doesn't really have any relationship with Jace. I think both are pretty easygoing guys. I mean, both very competitive, but like, I don't think they're, they're two guys that walk into a room and instantly have a problem. Zach Evans is just going around, just screwing everybody's recruitment up. He's so good. Yes. That everybody's going all in on him and basically screwing over. You get the all these other running, backs. running back. Yeah. Class. That's really good. He is the puppet master and they just have to wait for him. I, he and Milton, when one of those two fall, I think you'll see, Within like a month, you'll see 10 of the top 15 running back just commit. Like you'll just start seeing it because, okay, well, now we, you know, we got Zach or we didn't get Zach. Okay, now we've got to move to this guy. Okay, well, that guy didn't like us as much anyway. So you'll see it all start falling in place. But one of those two has to kind of start the dominoes. And, you know, people say, oh, they're five stars. People don't wait on running backs like that. It's not the same thing as a. I would say as a quarterback, but it's like a defensive lineman. Schools will wait as long as a defensive lineman, an elite guy, wants to wait. They'll they'll do that all the way up to signing day. For a running back, I think most places see, okay, yeah, Evans is better than, you know, Seth McGowan. But is the gap so big that we want to spend all of Lincoln Riley's time recruiting Zach Evans instead of just getting McGowan on board and moving on to who our quarterback's going to be or who our left tackle's going to be or whatever? I, I don't know that they do that. So, I, like I said, I think it's just where running back is viewed by most college coaches these days. It's a, it's an important position. You want to have a difference maker. But when you have a class this good with so many elite talents, I, I think at some point you're going to take the best player you can get and then move forward as you continue to build out the rest of your class. Well, I think you also have that situation where it's just like when OU, they had uh, Samaje Pirine and, and Joe Mixon. It's like – you're going to use both of them. You're going to get benefits out of both of them. If one isn't playing that well, the other one will. So it's like, uh, you know, it's not that it's disposable, but it's it's become a different position. It's not just Oklahoma that uses two running backs. It's everybody uses two or three now. Oh, I, and I talked to him about it. I asked him what he thought about being part of a two-back class, and he was, you know, and he didn't mention just Oklahoma. He goes, you know, Georgia does it, Alabama does it. He goes, you look around the country, and that's, that's really the way most teams operate now. It's a couple backs. And he goes, you know, for me, my ultimate goal is to make it to the NFL and to, to be able to, you know, I really, I, I don't want to misquote him here. So I just kind of want to give the general idea. It was basically, you know, it's a few less carries for me. It's a little less wear and tear for me when I'm ready to go and make that final step, you know, to the, to, you know, the highest level. So I, 
he's a smart kid, and I think more and more running backs recognize that. It's not an insult to you, especially in the college game. It can help you. You can you know elongate your career. You can have a better chance to be drafted highly. I mean, look at Josh Jacobs. I mean, the guy, I, he barely had 500 yards rushing this year, and he's probably going to go in the first round. I thought that, that shit was pretty interesting about, and I, I think a lot of pe- people have talked about it before, but just as far as kids realizing, I don't want to go to a school and be a 250 carry a year type guy. I want to like, have some tread left on my tires yes, when I go to the league. Yes, yeah. absolutely. I thought that was it. It, it. Maybe it's more of a sign of his maturity. I thought he was a really good interview as well. He was. He was. He's a really good kid to talk to. And, you know, and I think running backs have picked up on that a lot quicker than I see a lot of high school kids. Because I've gone on for years about all the 5'11 wide receivers that, you know, oh, you know, I'm about that money and I'm, I'm a receiver. I'm like, go play corner, dude. Like, they're yeah. dying for 5'11 corners in the NFL. They don't need 5'11 wide receivers that bad. They've got their, you know, everybody ends up on the trash heap at that position. So I, I think running backs have done a good job understanding my career is probably going to be over at, at best by the time I'm 31 or 32. I mean, we just talked about Adrian Peterson, one of the all-time freak shows. He's just about done. And, you know, he, he's early 30s. You just don't have that much shelf life. He's so, 31, yeah. Yeah, sa- save yourself as long as you possibly can. Well, and that's probably the last guy at Oklahoma that they just rode as a running back. I mean, Alan Patrick was his backup, and he'd come in a little bit, but still, they gave the ball to Adrian Peterson, you know, how many, 20, 25 times Adrian's a game? Adrian's 33. He's 33 now? Okay. The only time they weren't giving him the ball was when he was hurt. When he was yeah. So, I mean, that kind of puts it into perspective. Broke his collarbone. Mm-hmm. Kept him out, but... I mean, and, and you think about it, he had all those carries in college, all those carries in the NFL, and it's it's taking its toll on him, but he's still not done. I mean, he still – didn't he rush for 1,000 last year? Just, he did. Just barely 1,000? Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 I mean, like, again, that's a tribute to him just being a, a monster. Well, um, and, and we, we've all known this, but if you've ever seen Nelson, his father, you knew that he was just built <laughs> differently. Like, Nelson yeah. looks like he could still play basketball. Yeah, I feel like – DeMarco Murray is sort of what running backs are now. Yeah. They're, they're going to have some really good years. And, and he boom. left with something left in the tank, too. I mean, he just kind of, you know, walked away, had enough. He was still a productive back. He's getting in the spray tan business. And Adrian's probably the last running back that will. I think that's already cornered by another. Uh... He got married. DeMarco did. He got out of the spray tan business. That's, that's coach to you. <laughs> coach Murray. Coach <laughs> Coaching in Arizona, I'm I'm happy for him. Yeah, yeah. it's awesome. Uh, no, but like Adrian's probably a, a little bit of a dinosaur too, in that he was the last running back that we've seen at OU that couldn't really catch the ball well out of the backfield. Like everybody, That's a dying breed. everybody since then has been able to. Like I think kids now, they are they they I don't know fluent if, if fluent is the right word to call it, but they have that skill. That skill is developed at a younger age. If you're a running back, it has well, to be. And I think you see the evolution of it in Oklahoma running backs. As good as DeMarco Murray was as a receiver, Joe Mixon was better. I mean, like... Yeah, but DeMarco was special. I mean, for his time, he was special. (laughs) He absolutely was. Mix, You know, somebody asked me, you know, is Milton and Mixon, is there some comparison there is? And there is, really. Their frames are real similar. There, There are some things you can draw to. But comparing any running back I've ever seen to Joe Mixon as a receiver is not fair. I think I mean, he's that, the best. That guy he might be, be the an NFL wide receiver. He might be the best receiving running back that's ever played football. I and and you know people will hear that and think you know he's second third year guy in the NFL. What are you talking about? Like I'm not talking about like he's had that production. I'm saying from a natural ability to do something, he's he's unbelievable. That okay. catch he made against Tech still blows the one handed catch. Yeah. That, that's one of the best catches I've ever and seen. And that was one of those things, like, he didn't have to make it the catch that way. He just knew he could, and so he yep. did. Uh, okay, junior day is coming up. I know you guys talked about the first time around. It was kind of disappointing. It was, you know, not 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 a lot came out of it. Um, but it sounds like you, you're kind of building this one up to be a, a, a bigger deal. Or is that not the truth? You know... Is it falling I, it, it's a better group. It's a bigger group. There you go. I, I but, think there yeah. is more talent. It maybe isn't what I like. Because a month ago, we had, 
you know, about 10 guys confirmed. Well, now it's like 14 or 15. Like, it just hasn't grown the way I thought it would. But you look at the list. I mean, Damian Sellers, the Rivals 250 outside linebacker, who is really, really good. Uh, Turner Corcoran, the offensive tackle from Kansas that I think OU's got a really good shot at. Uh, Jacoby Covington, who I saw in Los Angeles last weekend. That's a Rivals 250 guy from Arizona. Uh, one of the big, the really the big ad of this week has been the Troy O'Meary kid. Uh, O'Meary, I'm not quite sure I'd say his last name right, even though I've actually seen the kid play. He is unbelievably talented. I, I think we've got him at like 75 in the country, and I think that may be low. He is really, really good. I saw him this year play against David Aguebu. Um, kind of one of those situations where, you know, like I said, when you when you walk in and see an elite guy, you should know that dude's elite. Um, when I walked into certain Fort Bend fields, I didn't always see an elite receiver at Fort Bend Travis. Um, I saw one, uh, excuse me, at, at uh, Fort Bend, pew, not pew, Travis. Pew. Yeah, Shots right. being fired. Yeah, okay, to put it clear, R.J. Henderson left something to be desired for me sometimes. This kid... You were there for like two minutes. You're like, he's special. He is 6'4", can run. He, he's got all the stuff you're looking for. And then you also, you know, okay, so those are your elite, you know, guys. And then you've got Michael Henderson, who's got no OU offer. Damian George, who has no OU offer. Um, Brady Ward, the offensive tackle from Alabama, who's got no OU offer. I mean, there, there are a lot of good players in this group. And I think the other thing you like, and, you know, Bob can back me up on this, I think you see some guys that it wouldn't shock you if they made a decision this weekend. Yeah, I don't know how, how many can, can do that, especially sure. with Lincoln Riley. It seems like he wants to save the spring game again to make mm-hmm. that big, big-time splash. But Dante Manning is the one that keeps coming to my mind. I, I think the, them offering him l- last week, and he seems so hell-bent on trying to make sure he gets to Norman as long as the weather co- cooperate. And that just seems like that's the type of guy that Roy Manning wants to bring in. That's the kind of size, the kind of length. That's perfect for what this secondary is going to be from now on. Yeah, you know, I can tell you that when I talk to the various coaches and stuff that OU has contacted, you know, whether it's a guy at a school that OU's made an offer or a guy they evaluated, they're asking how big is this guy really? What are his track times like? They want to see. It's not, oh, coach, I timed him 4-5 last week. They want to see track times. They want to see guys they know can run. And so I, I think that, and when you watch Manning, I mean, he is a big long legged kid that I bet you is a very good track guy. Um, the interesting part to me is they've made several offers. Uh, you look at Ryan Watts, Jahari Rogers, uh, the Josh Eaton offer they made in uh, Houston this week. That kid is unbelievably good. Uh, you know, and, and I talked about it in Oklahoma this morning. This is a, people are getting all wound up because OU's made some three star offers. Go look at the tape on some of these guys. Ryan Watts is a Rivals 250 guy. Josh Eaton may be a Rivals 100 guy. I mean, there are some really good players that Rivals clearly hadn't had a chance to fully evaluate yet. That'll all change. Those guys will move around accordingly. Uh, I think Oklahoma's made some good evaluations. And for me, I want to see, do they want to push for Dante, or are they willing to kind of wait and see what happens? Yeah, I think that's my number one question. What's the pecking order for the secondary? Because so many legitimate quality offers made in the last two to three weeks. But who's a take now and who's a, well, okay, let's wait till the spring game. Let's wait till barb- the barbecue when we know our n- numbers more and then we'll make a choice. Um, so if he had to put a number, would you say three? Maybe is the ceiling for commitments this weekend. I think that's a great weekend, Uh, you know, and just to, you know, and I'll go over it some in scoop and we'll talk about it some there. Uh, Some guys I would keep an eye on. I think Michael Henderson is one that everybody's going to watch. Actually, he changed plans, didn't he, Bob? Well, what he said is he'll be in Thursday or Friday. So I'm going to I'm going to check back with him. Because if he's there with Milton, I'm not saying that's going to help OU and Milton. But at least it'll give another person to sort of, okay, what do you think Milton thought of the campus? Like, kind of get a vibe of what, what he was going through. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I threw it out, and then I was like, wait, that's not right. I just had a, bra- a little brain flash. Um, you know, you look at Jacoby Covington, who's a guy that was really excited. Really, when I talked to him last week, now, I should say, we did a video interview with him. 
For some reason, the audio didn't come out. I don't know what it was. It's the only one we had trouble with. Everything else came out perfectly. Something went wrong with the audio on his interview. But he's a guy that told me he was going to visit OU and LSU this weekend. Seemed, or not this weekend, but this spring. And really seemed excited about Oklahoma and getting to see it and kind of seeing what it was about. Kind of talked about it. it was one of his dream schools growing up. So I don't think he'll announce this weekend. I don't think he'd pull the trigger. But would it shock me? Not really. And if you throw in the fact that he is a guy that is teammates and good friends with Keely Ringo, that's that's only all for the better. I mean, not only are you getting a really good talent on his right, but it would it would help you with Ringo. So we'll, we'll kind of see what develops there. Uh, obviously, his teammate Sellers is another guy to keep an eye on. Um, I, I don't think anything happens there. But Dante Manning, like, like Bob said, Turner Corcoran is a guy that I think Don't think, again, these are all just possibilities. Could I see things lining up to where he'd do something? Yeah. Do I think it happens? Probably not. But like I said, I think, Kerry, I think you're right. I think three is this weekend went about as well as it could have. One or two is probably more realistic. Yeah, I'm definitely looking at uh, Mikey just because, what was it, last week Mookie Cooper tweeted out OU edit, then committed to Texas. I don't think it was just happenstance that Mikey tweeted out the Texas edit last night when he's coming to Norman. I thought I, maybe I'm reading way too much and way much, uh, way too much into it, but I, I kind of saw that uh, correlation. Do you think maybe he got a shitty OU edit and he said, screw it. I can't go there. (laughs) I hope so. And you know, that's the next level of recruiting I want to get into is (laughs) I didn't like the edit they gave me. I'm going to go somewhere else. All right, uh, Josh, through the two two days, seems like only Ethan Downs, Savion Morrison. Is this a cause for concern in state? I I think it is. You know, I'm talking to more and more people, and I keep hearing that there are people that are just kind of wondering where Oklahoma is at. And this is even some people that are either extremely loyal to Oklahoma or have no problem with Oklahoma. I think they're just kind of wondering, within this new staff, I mean, you look at it, with the people that have come and gone, who are the guys that are going to make an argument for an Oklahoma kid? I mean, Cale Gundy, you could sort of see, he be an Oklahoma guy himself. Uh, Brian Odom, you know, from what I understand, I think he's gotten some of the Tulsa area in his recruitment, so we'll kind of see how he navigates that, kind of the relationships up there that I think have been have been hurt a little bit over the last few years, but uh, in twenty, the the problem is in twenty nineteen and twenty twenty. I get that Oklahoma is not going to have a lot of offers in those classes because there just weren't a lot of OU level guys in those classes. They just weren't um, or aren't. But in twenty twenty one, you need to be building those relationships now. You, you need to be doing what you can. You know, going by bags and visiting Kendall Daniels' coaching staff. Um, you know, go Bryce Stevens at, at John Marshall, I think, has a chance to be a really special guy. Uh, Tazon Taft at Sepulpa. There are a lot of guys where Oklahoma needs to keep these relationships going. And to do that, you can't just show up when they have a guy. You'll, you'll hear that from coaches, whether it's Oklahoma or Texas or anywhere else. They want to see you coming through the door with some regularity. Now, I don't think, you know, Beggs has any – any reason that they would they really expect OU to come by every year. But like Jinx, Union, Broken Arrow, you gotta go by there and pay the due diligence every year. You gotta you gotta make sure that staff feels good about you. So when you come in and try to recruit a guy, it's not just, oh well he only cares about us when we've got somebody. You know, that there needs to be a good relationship. And right now, whether it's fair or not, I don't get the impression that that's how every Oklahoma high school coach feels. For sure, what I I don't disagree. You, a, uh, AJ Green from from Union, another twenty twenty one name that you think would be on their radar at least getting visits, and you just don't don't see it yet. So I don't say confusing just yet, but I'll give Brian Odom a couple more months to maybe really start develop those ties. And during the spring evaluation period, especially when we're all out there, you you better see these coaches time and time again. They need start rebuilding some some of these re, uh, relationships that have clearly just gone sour during the last year. 
Yeah, I, no, I, I, I agree completely, Bob. It's just something that, again, and it's one of those things where is it just perception? Maybe, but you need to change that perception, whether it's reality or not. Like, you can't. You can't have your own state thinking you don't care about the players that come from it. Like that, that just that's a bad recipe because then you end up with Dax Hill, and Josh Proctor, and some of these other guys. That, especially in the case of Josh Proctor, the more I talk to people, it sounds like oh, you should have had him. They they just didn't do what they needed to do. Glad the fire they fired the people responsible for that shit. Yeah, well, and that and I've gotten into that with several people as well, Eddie. I think it's a really fair point with. I think some people are putting it all on like, well, this is Oklahoma's official policy. Well, most of the people that you had a problem with were either fired or let go or however you want to term it. So maybe you have an issue with the people and not the program. We'll, we'll have to see what that becomes. But I mean, I don't think there's any question that it's a little bit more of an uphill climb for in-state guys than it used to be. And that may, I don't know that that's because that's a policy of Oklahoma. I think it's because when you can recruit so well nationally like they've done, it's hard to convince yourself that, yeah, we need this in-state guy that maybe isn't quite as good as this guy from Florida or California, but we need to have some of that within our program, guys that grew up caring about this program and have some vested interest. Speaking of uh, unrest, the uh, OU football team, a little bit of that lately. By the time we podcasted last week, we talked about Ron Tatum. Entering the portal uh, shortly, as it always seems to happen, uh, the uh, you guys were able to break the uh, Derek Green news uh, of him wanting to leave the program, and it was I kind of smelled the BS from the very beginning. As soon as you guys, uh, I think Josh, you and Bob both got texts from either Derek or his, his father, and uh, it turned out my BS detector was was right. All time story, just an all time story. I love it so much. It, it really was. Um, and I, I won't lie. I, normally, I think I would have been with you, Terry. Like I would have thought, well, this doesn't, this doesn't smell right. This because he, he never mentioned the military before. I'm just glad you know? we didn't go out and do any stupid stories about. This man is gonna change the world with it's not such a bad deal for OU. It's, it's bigger than football. Yeah, it's bigger than football. Yeah, um, I wouldn't have let us is, write that story, by the way. Like, I, it, it just surprised me that they would even let that come about unless they were sure. And because, I, like I said, his dad is military, like, and is like career military. So, I, it just, like I said, it surprised me. I didn't think that's the way that would go. And when I'm I talk thinking, to his dad, I'm thinking I more it's like if I tell my dad this, mm-hmm. he'll let me do. He'll let. I don't want to be here, uh, but I don't really want to just say it's not a good fit or this or that. It's like, uh, you know, we'll, I'll tell my dad this, and he'll understand. He'll let me leave, and then 48 hours later, we'll talk about. Because it seemed like, I mean, tell me if I'm wrong, Josh. It seemed like his dad was the one that was kind of like. Well, you know, he said he wants to leave and, and enter a, a military service branch or Coast Guard or whatever, but I want to make sure, you know, that's what he wants to do if he changes his mind and put him in the portal. Yeah, it was definitely Dad. Like, uh, Derek acted like that's what he's doing. Um, he, he's going to go to the military, and that was it. He didn't really leave it that open-ended until I came back and asked him based on what his dad had said, and he said, yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it's possible. Like, he, he just didn't entirely rule it out, but he – he didn't act like that was something that was on his mind. Now, maybe he played it that well, but I, I, I don't know. Like, I, I, I don't really think that's what it was. Like, I, I think, I don't know. I, I don't know. Like, I, it, there's a lot of that story that confuses me and doesn't add up. And I don't know. Like, I, the bottom line is, this is, this is not a big deal for Oklahoma football. Like, I, I, Derek Green, to me, was probably never more than a body for Oklahoma on that defensive line. So now they've got a scholarship open for next year, and they can go get a guy that I think maybe bears more unanimity on where he fits into their plans. The the only thing I, I don't give a Green is when you say you're going to delay your military career, right? So you're going to enter the portal, get your degree. 
Well, if it's nothing against OU, couldn't you get your degree at OU and then go into the mil the military? I don't get why he was so confused as to why people didn't understand why his explanation didn't make any sense because it just doesn't. I don't know. It's it's two bad transfers in a row. I mean, Ron Tatum thought he could enter the portal just by, I don't know, maybe there was a TARDIS on, you know, in his room or something. I don't I'm know what that word portal. is. That's a, that's a telephone booth that Doctor Who goes. I only know because I work with nerds. I think Doctor Who is the dumbest show that's ever been invented. But that's how Doctor Who travels around, apparently. It's something called the TARDIS. Like, I'll take your word for it. Like the Lego movie talked about it, so yeah. I was right, I was right with you. We should move on. <laughs> uh, I had an interesting lunch this week. Did you? Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Got invited to lunch by with? Joe Castiglione. Oh. And I didn't, I don't want people to get upset like, oh, why didn't you tell us all this? Like, whatever I tell little... you. Dun, 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 dun. Like, I, I, it, was, it was just an informal lunch for us to get together. He invited me. So there was, I wasn't like recording the entire thing and it wasn't really to write a story. But it was more just kind of a, hey, let's just get together and talk and I'll tell you about some things going on and. You can tell me about things going on. So it was just kind of one of those kind of lunches. But if you what? want to ask me questions, I will tell you this. Uh, no matter what, Bob, no matter what people ask you about Lon Kruger in his future, Josie's fired up about next year. They should be. That class is really good. He's fired on. up about what he's disappointed, you know, that things have gone this way this year. Which they're still in Joe Lenardi's yeah. bracketology, a ten seed right now. They are, but and that we talked about that yesterday or the other day too. Like, you know, the way th- the way things are set up, we're still in good position if we can win some games here to close this out, because they did a lot of work early, which matters with the way the current committee is set up and the the what they're looking for the. Uh, quadrants or whatever you call it. Quadrants, road games, neutral sites, even games like Wofford, and that that ends up being a. They need really to beat nice Texas win. though. I mean, that's, yeah, they that's need to win out at one. home. If they win out at home the rest of the way, I and maybe I think win a Big in. Twelve tourney game. I thought that Terry, last year it didn't matter. Yeah, they still got in. <laughs> Not to interrupt the basketball talk that I know everyone is Losing very faith excited in the about. NCAA tournament by the day. But if they make was it, there yeah. any talk from Joe C uh, concerning us being too mean and possibly cutting off access? No more okay, access. Okay, We're yeah, done. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, for all the people on the boards that want to pull this crap about, you guys are, you know, you're too negative and, you know, you cuss and you, you're, you're crass and you don't represent the program. I'm sorry, subscriber, that said all this, but you're getting it, okay? Uh you know, Joe C's well, going to cut off your access. We went to OU. Uh, well, we don't know that. Eddie, he may, he might, he might have a master's or doctorate from I there. I bet, I bet. <laughs> so, I mean, but yeah, people have been, you know, people that get mad at us and they're like, you know, and they're usually mad at us because we're griping because we don't think Lincoln gives us enough access, which I expressed those thoughts to Joe uh, during our lunch. And, you know, there's, you know, for all you people that think, you'll want to tell us how to do our jobs and that we're not doing it the right way and Joe C's going to cut us off. Guess what? Joe C invited me to lunch. He paid. He loves us. I even I even freaked out a little bit because of people like that because I was like, oh, crap, Joe C called me. He wants to go to lunch. This must be about Eddie. Like, <laughs> that was my first thought. And I directly Hello. asked him. I, I He said, when we first sat down, he said, well, I don't have an agenda I'm pushing today. I just wanted to, you know, have some informal... And a formal discussion, or you know, I just want to talk to you and have lunch and catch up. And and I said, oh, good. I really thought this was about going to be about Eddie. And he just started laughing. He said he loves Eddie. So boom. That doesn't mean that you can start being. <laughs> we have a hor- we have a more horrible. We person. have access to do everything we wanted, anything we wanted. This feels like we just gave like Eddie a platinum card. No, I know that's what I'm saying. No, you don't have carte blanche to do <laughs> whatever already, you want. Now. I already have Nate Fakin's credit card, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you two went to dinner last night with uh, your girl Sam, and uh, I don't know if we can talk about Sam's situation. Can we? I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, so 
you guys went to dinner and you guys have both have the same debit yeah, they, card. We have the same debit card and they they got switched up somehow. And so Were you I drinking? went drinking. No, just I didn't even because I don't even look at it. I just put it back in my wallet. Oh, that's and, my card. Yeah, and You're, just yeah. took it. I would back do the and, same thing. Yeah. Uh, then we, I I went and made some purchases this morning. Went and bought some stuff. And how much stuff? Uh, just like some shoes and a pullover. And it was like you know it was like two hundred bucks or wow. whatever. And uh, no big deal. Pocket change. Uh, nice. And then they're like, uh, "Sir, <laughs> your pen number's not working." I was like, "Hmm, that's interesting." Did you notice then that it wasn't your card? No, I didn't realize it until I walked out of the place and uh, Nate was like, I think you have my card. I just got a, uh, I just happened to look at my bank account and uh, there's a charge at Metro Chew Warehouse. I was like, huh, I do. So we got to go meet up here after the OU baseball game today. So he's furiously charging, trying to no, he'd... come to up with $200 to charge on your card. I hope. Well, I hope not, actually, yeah. but either way, it was pretty funny. He tweeted he got a tank of gas. Yeah, he got a tank of gas last <laughs> night on my card. Good. Good for him. Is he driving? Well, even the, big even truck? the F950 doesn't take that much gas. Yeah, gas is cheap, which is not good for Oklahoma. That's like when someone celebrates that gas is cheap. I'm like, are you a moron? You know where you live. You want gas to be $4 a gallon, okay? Look up at that press box. You want a new one? Let's get these prices up. <laughs> exactly. You ever want that west side to be done? <laughs> I, I've married into some oil family, so I, I, I need to. I, we, we need the oil prices to go up from the questions to stay afloat. Yeah, it's a. I mean, don't celebrate. Don't celebrate cheap. Celebrate cheap gas in Oklahoma. So yeah, I mean, we went and had lunch, and I will tell you this. There is, and it's not just Oklahoma, but I think OU is finally starting to feel that uh, the pinch of what's happening with attendance around college football. Yeah, and it's kind of crazy to think about considering, you know, Oklahoma's sold out every game since 99, or quote, air quote, sold out yeah. every game since 99. But, I mean, I think it's probably a problem that is finally hitting the blue bloods for the first time. Yeah. Uh, you go around, I mean, you go around to anywhere, though, uh, you know, lesser programs, not lesser programs, but, you know, I programs that don't fill it up like OU does, like Alabama does. Well, even, I mean, go to Texas. Everybody's Texas has had a lot right of problems now. with yeah. attendance. Yeah. It's just kind of, of a sign of the sucked. times. It's terrible. I, I mean, it's, I, don't, I don't think it's something that people are surprised by, though. It's like, if I, if I wasn't working or covering a game and I had the opportunity to sit at home and have some buddies over and just drink all day, as much as I love tailgating and going to games and stuff, I can understand the intrigue or the appeal to a family that has a young kid that doesn't want to get yeah. a babysitter, yeah. doesn't want to get blackout and then have to drive back to Oklahoma City when you could literally do it from your house and probably have a better seat. Well, you and I were talking about this. Like, how many of your friends do you know that have season tickets? Maybe one or two. And probably most of their parents do have season tickets, The parents right? have season tickets. They have bought them through their office or through their work, which I didn't realize you can't do anymore. Well, you can do or it. You, you just you don't just get the write tax off. write-off. Okay. Yeah. That's, but, I mean, that's something that's really hurting the university, too. Yeah. I mean, look, the whole Gallagly born thing, fundraising is down, uh, but it's down in the athletic department, too. And you, know, you still have this – OU is still a program. You see those lists that come out every year about how – you know, Texas sets a new record for academic, uh, for athletic department uh, spending or fundraising or, or budget or whatever it is. Like, OU's still not in that category. They're still, not that they're a little brother, because, I mean, OSU and uh, KU and all these places, they would love to have the budget that OU has, but they're still not, you know, the elites when it comes yeah. to how much money they have available. They still have to... It's like, for instance, we were talking about, uh, you know, scheduling, and it's becoming a real problem because teams that, you know, like, a, I, I don't know, I can't remember the, he, I don't think he told me the name of the school, but uh, for instance, like, they're trying to, a, a, a low FBS team, a, a, a Division One team, they're, even the lowest of the low almost want $2 million to come play, and... Joe's just like, screw it. I'm going to, you know, I'll, I'll schedule two really good non-conference games and then I'll bring in uh, an FCS team. 
because I don't have to. Because that way I won't have to raise your ticket prices as much. I wonder what his, uh, what's his status or feeling on the neutral site game against a. He doesn't want it because he's not going to take away a home game. Yeah. Because we talked about that. Like, would you make more money if you were like, didn't Auburn and Washington get paid two million each last year to play in Atlanta? Yeah, but I mean, it's not just about that one-time payout. It's about your season tickets as a whole. Yeah. Like, if you have five games at home, well, not to mention you're bringing plus in you, Kansas, Iowa State, you're giving up the like. If OU Texas wasn't in Dallas, they could probably afford to do that. Like, yeah. that's why Alabama and LSU and these yeah, people. But Georgia can, plays Florida in in, in Orla- uh, Jacksonville. Yeah. But Georgia and Florida don't usually play a neutral site game, do they? Can you remember them playing a season opener neutral oh, site I game? Oh, I see what you're I saying. Gotcha. Two, two neutral sites yeah. in one season. Yeah, they don't. I can't ever remember them doing that. So, yeah, I mean, you could get a better team. And look, as long as you don't lose a conference game, you can lose to an Ohio State or an Alabama in the, in the preseason. But you got to lose to those guys. I mean, but I, I think in the future you're going to see like a – an LSU, and then maybe like an NC State. It'll be a name team, that second team. And uh, Houston's going to be good for them this year because they're going to be a, a, a team that probably beats a lot of people, especially with their quarterback. So that'll – that and UCLA not being that great, it's not that big of a deal. because Houston's gonna, But you would like – I mean, when they scheduled UCLA, they didn't know they'd suck this bad. And that's always the danger. You have yeah. no clue. You thought Tennessee might be better than what it was. You caught the Buckeyes at just the right time. You just never know with this one. But I, here's the thing, and I think this has hurt season tickets too, is the Big 12 had no idea what they were doing to like the bloodlines when, when all this realignment happened. Because like you look at the schedule now, I mean, not having Nebraska, not having uh, even Colorado, I mean – the games that people my age that are in their 40s grew up with no longer exist. And that would be something, like when you look at a season ticket package now and you see TCU and Baylor and West Virginia like, oh, uh, and Iowa State, I mean, you're just like, what the hell? No, like, You want me to pay what? Yeah, you want me to donate how much on top of that? On top of my seat? I have to pay what? For this? Yeah. I mean. I don't think so. It has devastated like like I said, the bloodlines. Like you don't you grew up going to this game and it was a great game and a big game. Now you're left with Bedlam in Texas, which is in Dallas every year. So I I it's a very small I would think it's a very small amount of people that do this, but people buy OU basketball tickets just so they can get, get OU points Texas tickets. To get yeah. OU Texas tickets. Right. Yeah. I mean I bet there's people that buy football season tickets just so they have preference on Bull game in OU Texas. Oh, my best friend, oh, yeah. my best yeah, friend's sure. parents did that, and they both passed away this last year. He lives in San Francisco. His other sister Probably lives renew, in California. Really. No, they're going to let a lot of those tickets go back to OU, and that yeah. was tens of thousands of dollars that was being donated. Yeah, I mean that will continue to play. I mean, and and we did. You know, they are putting in the chair rails because they had to do that, but they are upgrading the Wi-Fi. So hopefully, Eddie, that means you can tweet at us during the game yeah i don't know I, if that's the best idea like yeah. I, I think i'm gonna have to disable my phone <laughs> you've seen some of the things that i direct message let alone get out yeah so hopefully everyone will have better you know wi-fi service and all that stuff but yeah i mean this is it's a it's a big hurdle for athletic departments right now yeah there's no doubt about and that the tax law is changing where you can't you know write off your your deduction or you know, your uh, donations i mean that's hurting so it's a trying time for college football and a trying time for your athletic budget because if you're not not only are you just barely selling out but you're not able to command better donations you know you you're basically saying give us 100 bucks on top of your season tickets and 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 we'll give you seats and you can that's that's pretty much the minimum donation and you can there's no waiting line you could pretty much call in and say hey i want season tickets and i'll donate 100 dollars and You'll get him. Did he weigh in at all about 11 a.m. kickoff at home? No, we didn't really talk about that. Uh, I think we all know that everyone hates it. Uh, and that really, you know, on top of having the schedule that you have now, to have to go play Kansas at 11 o'clock in the morning, I mean, at least let me get drunk in the parking lot before I watch that crap. Well, you get drunk inside the stadium now, too. 
But did, are there like, I don't know, maybe that's something that we can start doing, you know, as we add more staff and stuff. I would love to go out and just kind of do a, like a game day feature outside of the stadium or like maybe in downtown Oklahoma City just to see how people take in football now. Because it's got to have changed a lot. I mean, are there yeah. massive watch parties, I would imagine, in Oklahoma City? Yeah, where people I mean, would rather I, I do that, that a, than, go, than go to the actual game? I think it just depends. I think it depends on age group. I think it depends on, you know, what the do weather's 30 like. 30 year olds, I mean, do 30 year olds guard, you know, they gather like at Blue Garden on Saturday and just go nuts watching OU football? Uh, I mean, no, probably not. And that's probably has a little bit to do with the weather. I mean, I guess in, in the late later months of the year I, maybe in september they do or like fastler i know a lot of people go over to a buddy's house they all have kids now and yeah you know hang out or uh you know i think that there are a lot of places downtown or midtown that you can go watch games now that there's probably a good amount but there's also a lot of people that you know especially kind of in my age group that will come down to norman and not even with no intention of ever walking into the stadium go tailgate go to seven yeah. Or go to Logie's or go to uh, O'Connell's, wherever on Campus Corner, and watch the game. And then you get a party bus, and you know the party bus leaves an hour, hour, two hours after the game. And, you, you know, for an 11 a.m. game, you're back in Oklahoma City by 5 or 6. And see, I could never do that. I could never, like, there were times, I remember OU played Cal when DeMond Parker was here. We were still in, in college. And my buddy had a watch party at his house. I hated every minute of it because I just wanted to be left alone to watch the game. Like, and I ended up locking myself in one of his bedrooms to where nobody could bother me yeah. or talk to me because I just, oh, you got their asses kicked because it was John Blake. But I wanted to be able to scream in my own piece. We would always, you know, obviously tailgate or whatever. But and this is probably a product of OU being pretty good while I was in school. But I mean, we would leave by halftime. So I've never been one to get after the students because I completely understand where they're coming from. Can we rewind to Eddie talking about some people having kids at watch <laughs> parties and like the disdain in his voice? He was like, no, oh, there was no disdain. <laughs> I feel like we're getting into a kids versus non kids. There was no, there was no disdain thing with this podcast. I mean, I did say some awful things last week about parents. No, it's just... And uh, I did pretty much shit on Bob, you know, announcing that he was having a kid when I said it, anybody can be a parent. <laughs> Nobody's special. <laughs> I'm not special. Fair, you kind of pre-shit. We're like not. You, you pre-shit and then he announced. Listen, I'm not... So that was Bob's choice. I'm not yeah, against it. Thank you. I feel better now. I will celebrate your sperm. How about that? <laughs> well, you're not celebrating the sperm. You're, sp you're celebrating the success the of the The ability sperm. to conceive. Yeah. There we go. You're not barren. Congratulations. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm, not I'm not mad at anybody that's doing that. Yeah, it's yeah. a little inconsiderate, but <laughs> other than that, and that's just strictly well, I mean, from a friends about, group. It's about time. I mean, you you had wedding season for about three years there for a while. Yeah, I know. It's it's it literally all those people. every weekend. So now yep. those people. So they apparently you went to a lot of weddings where the girl had already been knocked up. Uh. No, I don't think so. I think a bunch of those have uh, happened after the fact. A couple of people have two kids. A lot of that was like four or five years ago. Though. I, like, know. Right. I know. Yeah, I mean, it just doesn't seem like it's been that long. Got a pretty I'm active thrilled. spring oh, coming was, up this, this I, year, too. I think uh, there, I the most pissed off, frustrated, uh, jerky, whiny, bad employee Eddie that I've ever seen was toward the end of a wedding season when he had gotten so fed up with purchasing and paying for tuxes that he had to rent. Beaten down. Uh, he needed a loan, which I gave to him. Uh, it was literally like his. it was tearing his life apart going to all these weddings. It wasn't as close to uh, it wasn't as close to moving Eddie, but it was it was close. Moving Eddie was homicidal yeah yes. suicidal yes well that was a very there were at times when time. i i almost gave you a talking to like we, <laughs> josh and i almost wanted to sit you down at one point and just say okay stop being such a bitch i probably needed it <laughs> probably needed it but we made it through we made it through yeah you're a good bounce back guy yeah i bounce back real easily it's it's from all the experience of hangovers eddie well, That's now probably that true too. now that we pay you extra for the podcast, you can't be a dick. It's not allowed. I'm actually worth it. 
Well, <laughs> I would say that's true. Yes. Uh, okay. I think, Nowadays. I think, uh, our, unless there's anything else you want to ask me about uh, lunch with Joe C. Uh, I don't think so. I, I think that that kind of, I mean, there really isn't a whole lot out there as far as um, lingering questions within the program. I don't think that, I'm sure there's something out there that I'll think about when we leave. But There were a couple of things I wish I'd asked him about while we were there, but I mean, yeah. we sat there for two hours and just chatted the yeah. whole time. Did did what he have a, a did he have a message for us like how he thinks how he, they view the media? We talked about recruiting and uh, you know compliance and the types of media that are out there and uh, you know doing things the right way and um, you know that was kind of if there was any kind of you know sit down that was probably it. I mean. I think at the he end wasn't of the upset day, with anything that we ever did, but you know that. I mean, that's one of those things. It's just like I think you know, athletic directors worry about you know, are these guys you know doing anything that's going to get us in trouble? Because let's face it, there have been some people that recently that have led to NCAA violations. Yeah, that cover recruiting. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think at the end of the day, everything is changing in a lot of different ways as far as the athletic department. On? Huh? Why did you put sunglasses? I have no on? idea. <laughs> Uh, as as far as the athletic department, as far as what we do for a living, as far as the way that we cover the team, it's all changing. It, Gary, yeah. it's changed in the last. I mean, shit. I was talking about this with somebody else the other day. Is like they're asking me how long I'd worked with you guys, and I mean, ten years. I would say in the last five years, it's changed exponentially from where it was ten years ago in twenty ten. Yeah. We're a lot more personality based than we used to be. I think. Agreed. I think, uh, you know, the podcast obviously has let you guys know kind of who we are a little bit more than what a message board. Because a message board is just one of those deals where uh, you have a bunch of rule benders that just try and bend every. Like, here's the thing about the message board. Every time you ban someone, the first question they ask is, what rule did I break? Yeah. I've read all your rules. What rule did I break? And I I told someone the other day, uh, hey, uh, Tank, how you doing? Josh banned Tank. And uh, so he, Josh wouldn't respond to Tank because he was probably mad at Tank. That's not true. I responded to him. Did, he didn't like the response. He just <laughs> Which this happens. Like uh, we mentioned the one one. I think we talked about the guy that I banned uh, because he was just he's just an outright jerk to me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he's figured out that he can communicate if he reports posts <laughs> as banned. So he just he. He did the same thing. He's like, he was like, Josh shouldn't be up at four fifty three a.m. on a Saturday. He shouldn't have to work that hard. And he was, what he was saying is, you're a lazy ass, and he's covering for you. Like, he's insinuating that I don't do anything. So he is now, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna allow him to do it. I'm not gonna completely like perma ban him, but like he could never get. He went all the way to Yahoo to try and get satisfaction. Yahoo just came back to us and said, yeah, this crazy person's emailing us. You need to take care of this. Uh, so, so, but. So Tank came to me, as usually does, when he can't get satisfaction from you. When people can't get satisfaction from me, they go to you. So it's kind of like, ask your mom, ask your dad, you know, that kind of thing. And so I just said, Tank, you know, you know as well as anybody that there are rule benders everywhere. And people live to bend the rules. Even We can write out rules all day long. But there's a rule of, there's an unwritten rule of common sense. And you know what it is. And he was like, yeah, you're right. I'll just... I think his ban is up now. I think he's back, but yeah, I don't know yeah. why I started that conversation or went down that road. Um, but I did. I, I think you were talking about just uh, and he's I was talking about the changes of everything. That's oh yeah, happened yeah, yeah. But personality based, so I was talking about stuffy. message boards. Yeah. It's it's you know you can get in fights really fast on a message board. People can take what you yeah. say uh, a certain way when you don't mean it on a message board. Uh, and you know, we've got, we're in, we're talking about lots of different things and doing different stuff. I mean, uh, we need to, I can't believe I'm saying this, but we need to unleash more Eddie, uh, with all the video stuff he likes to do. Uh, and we're going to be doing some of that stuff. I had a pretty good one today, by the way. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm looking it, forward it, to yes, seeing it. I will say though, I think it all comes together as far as, you know, what we've been trying to do as far as it look- know, get our, not name out there, but like building a relationship and letting people know who we are is very important, I think, in these times yeah, as far yeah. as... I don't know about the viewer or the listener trusting you as far as just knowing you better. 
And I think that's one of the reasons why, like, I'll be honest, I don't know a single person that gets up and reads the newspaper every day. Now, you, I, I, you can read I've it stopped online. Doing that. I mean, I've stopped doing that. You can doing read that, it which, online, yeah. obviously, but I don't know a single person outside of my parents that still get the newspaper delivered to their house. There are, and I think that there's a reason for that. And there are there are things, yeah, there there are things that are changing just in terms of, you know, we've gone through this really long period of aggregation with you know Bleacher Report and SB Nation started, and everybody getting used to everything being free, and now you see like with the Athletic and and you know Rivals has stayed true to what they are. We're a subscription service. We're not losing sight of that. We're we're trying to do things, and, and Josh can tell you this, it just in the last couple of days, we've had discussions about, okay, what do we do next for our subscribers? You know, not just podcasts and video and this and that. Like, what's the next big thing that we can do uh, for our subscribers? Yes, that's your phone doing that. Is that, that. my phone? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we're still about giving you the most value possible for your 10 bucks a month or your $100 a year or whatever it is. Uh, and, you know, that would be, you know, adding more staff to give you guys – more content and things like that. So it would be me working on, you know, podcast and, you know, the post game shows that we added, and, you know, Eskridge Lexus is already on board with doing that again next year. So, uh, you know, giving you probably more pre and post game coverage. That's a little out of the norm. That's not just game stories. I mean, uh, it, I could probably do a better job of writing more columns and things like that, giving you opinions, uh, stuff like that. So, you know, the basis of what we do is Soonerscoop.com, the website that you pay $10 a month for, but it is changing. It is evolving, and we are doing more. I I kind of termed it a while ago hyper-local, uh, and, you know, that's what I believe is kind of the future, and that's kind of where we're headed and what we're all about. And with that said, we'd like to announce that we're uh, raising subscription prices <laughs> to $500 a month. <laughs> There's been no talk of subscription <laughs> prices being raised, so... You know, and for people, and you know, we've talked about this sometimes with the pod. I know we're getting long, and we'll, you know, I'll keep this brief. But people that kind of say, "Oh, you know, you guys do the podcast; it's free." And what does that bring me? That's like the the things, the stuff, the revenue we make off the podcast allows me to go to Los Angeles. Yeah, it allows really me does. To make that trip. I couldn't make that in the past. Now we have some extra funds. I can do things like that. We can send three guys to Miami for a week. Um, Barely. I, while I'm in Orlando, we, we, I don't know if we could have <laughs> sent three guys to to San Francisco or San Jose or wherever the hell that was. Not without a big bet. Oh my god! Uh, I had to do the bet, man. In hindsight, yeah. I'm glad I they made, didn't make that. I bet. made the best bet, which was not making the bet. Okay, because uh, if they were down twenty one to nothing and we had and said, "Okay, I think we've gone too far with this," they're down twenty one to nothing. We have four grand invested in that. Oh god! I might kill somebody at the Orange Bowl. Oh my god! <laughs> There's been a murder on the sidelines. There is an uh, apparent. Carrie is down on the field attacking Mike. Or <laughs> Carrie is broken into Mike Stoops' press box room, and he's attacking him. And why is Mike Stoops here? here. <laughs> oh yeah, he wasn't there. <laughs> he was gone. Yeah, no, <laughs> Carrie is attacking Ruffin McNeil. Okay. Uh, you know, and for I, I'm going to go to Atlanta next month. I mean, we'll be at the Five Star Challenge. Probably Eddie, Bob, and myself. Maybe Carrie. I mean, like. This and there's I some, know it, yeah. it's not direct, but people can't always see what this podcast has made available for our members to have access to things that they haven't before. And to be honest, uh, this is the biggest growth year that we've ever had with this podcast, really the last two years. I think Bob coming aboard is part of that too. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a another production. We kind of see ourselves not just a website as a media company now, and that's kind of we're becoming bigger and bigger and doing more stuff and uh, there's going to be some cool stuff coming this next year that we're planning right now, uh, which is going to, it all will bring you guys more information. Uh, like, you know, like you haven't got, we've got some stuff planned that nobody has done in this industry, which I think if we can pull it off, will be really cool. Plus there's new apps coming. Uh, those are under development right now. Uh, hoping to, you know, it, it, in the next month, you know, a month from now, hopefully we'll, we'll know a little bit more, but those are in development. So. You know, all this stuff we're just trying to work for you guys and bring you more information, um, and that's that's what we do. So while while the time still giving you breaking news, still giving you uh, all the latest coming out of OU, and there you go. All right, Josh, appreciate you, man. And by the way, uh, building a studio for Josh is next on the agenda, so he doesn't sound like a weird Skype dude. Like he sounds like he's in the room with us. So that's going to be pretty cool too. But he's not here. But he will be here. Son of he a- will sound <laughs> like he's here. Are you gonna? Are you? Are you, I can't wait till after the Houston Rivals camp because that's when Josh gets to 
brag about being there too, and Bob not. You no, know, gonna be there. Gonna be New Orleans. Gonna be Dallas. Gonna be in Atlanta. You know, I mean, just just get out there, Bob. You got to get there and see the people. That's what's important. I think we'll actually be in New Orleans at the same time. Um, oh, but I'll be like a bachelor. I have a bachelor party. party. <laughs> you are officially not allowed at the camp, Eddie. Do not show up with like your underwear outside of your clothes and having a, like a man can in your hand. That is not permitted. By the way, uh, important dates coming up. Pro day, March 13th. Yep. Uh, I, I believe practice is March 7th. Oh, I saw you posted that, and I was like, where the hell did you get that? Yeah, I think you, asking Bob. Oh, okay. Well, you shouldn't have said that. Now you're going to be in trouble. Wow, well, now you've outed him. <laughs> hey, you didn't have to out him. Yeah, you outed him. I thought you were we a good reporter. We should delete that. Hey, let's, let's, fix it. let's Mark, add a beep in there. Mark. Beep. I just marked it. There you go. Yeah. That's gonna uh, be one long ass beat. And then uh, we got. I guess we'll 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 tape next week before the combine actually starts. But yeah, get into what Kyler needs to do, and if he doesn't needs to do yeah. anything. How about that? How's that for a tease? And uh, we'll probably hear from Kyler uh, from the combine. Yeah, we should. Well, our, our guy Kevin Noon will be up there. So, will he? Because of the podcast, I'll pay for him to help us out with that stuff. Boom. There you go. All nice. right. Thanks to Eddie. Thanks to Bob. I am Kerry Murdoch. We'll see you guys back here next week on the Choctaw Casino and Resort in Durant Unofficial 40 Podcast.